Gather here in the mystery of the hour. Gather here in one strong body. Gather here in the struggle and the power. Spirit Grani. Our reading this morning is The Invitation by Araya Mountain Dreamer. It doesn't interest me what you do for a living. I want to know what you ache for, and if you dare to dream of meeting your heart's longing. It doesn't interest me how old you are. I want to know if you will risk looking like a fool for love, for your dream, for the adventure of being alive. It doesn't interest me what planets are squaring your moon. I want to know if you have touched the center of your own sorrow, if you have been opened by life's betrayals, or have become shriveled and closed from fear of further pain. I want to know if you can sit with pain, mine or your own, without moving to hide it, or fade it, or fix it. I want to know if you can be with joy, mine or your own, if you can dance with wildness and let the ecstasy fill you to the tips of your fingers and toes without cautioning us to be careful, to be realistic, to remember the limitations of being human. It doesn't interest me if the story you are telling me is true. I want to know if you can disappoint another to be true to yourself, if you can bear the accu accusation of betrayal and not betray your own soul, if you can be faithless and therefore trustworthy. I want to know if you can see beauty even when it is not pretty every day and if you can source your own life from its presence. I want to know if you can live with failure, yours and mine, and still stand at the edge of the lake and shout to the silver of the full moon, yes! It doesn't interest me to know where you live or how much money you have. I want to know if you can get up after the night of grief and despair, weary and bruised to the bone, and do what needs to be done to feed the children. It doesn't interest me who you know or how you came to be here. I want to know if you will stand in the center of the fire with me and not shrink back. It doesn't interest me where or what or with whom you have studied. I want to know what sustains you from the inside when all else falls away. I want to know if you can be alone with yourself and if you truly like the company you keep in the empty moments. Blessed be. People around the world are drawn to defining the meaning of life. Across every religion and every culture, people seek answers to the big question of why are we here? We've come up with some outstanding ideas to love, family, connection to humanity, even God. This month, though, I've been wondering, what if there's a bigger question to ask? I've been watching us, this community of ours, this past year, and trying to figure out what makes us tick, what brings us alive, and what makes us answer the call of life. Why do we help when we do, and why do we turn away when we do? What pieces of us drive us together week after week, and what inspires us to work for the world that we want? How do we manifest that in which we claim to believe? In other words, what is the meaning of church, and our church specifically? This isn't a bigger question I just referred to, but an important one nonetheless. And it is the one I've been asking myself this year. And in searching for the answers to that question, I stumbled on another. What gives our life meaning? I spent Christmas morning with my daughter and her mother, Deanne. We had a fairly typical morning, pouring through our stockings, opening gifts, drinking coffee, and then drinking more coffee. We got ready for the day amid smiles, laughter, and love. And we also had this big gift looming over the three of us. And not looming in any negative way, 
just looming as a reminder that a morning is not actually typical and definitely far from ordinary. Christmas morning, Deanna and Carlin asked me to formally adopt Carlin, which is big, right? Loving and big and amazing and big and humbling, transforming. For those of you who don't know her story, Carlin is, in the most technical of realities, my former stepdaughter. I was married to her father for 10 years, and I helped raise his four children, three from his first marriage, and Carlin, his and Deanne's daughter from just before he and I started dating. I met Carlin when she was two and a half. When her father and I split, Deanne graciously let me stay in Carlin's life and retain the visitation that he had given up. From that point on, we three began building a relationship of co-parenting, friends, and finally now family. And so here we are six years later. We live together, we share our daughter's life, and they asked me to adopt her. And here I am, trying not to cry as I get to the point of my story, which is coming, I promise. So we got ready for the day and then all the emotions. We piled into the car and we drove to visit Deanne's extended family. Family not by blood, but by choice, by love. We went from there to my mama's house for more stockings, more presents, more food, and more family. Always more family for me. Because that is how I live a meaningful life. For me, living a life of meaning means immersing myself in family and all that it means. The building of bridges, the time spent together, the healing of wounds, the endless ways to show up and show love. Remembering my roots and planting roots for my children and loving, loving, loving. And how each of us gives our life meaning differs, of course. Carlene, our church admin and member extraordinaire. Have you watched her lately? I really watched her. Mr. Rogers, and yes, I'm quoting the great Mr. Rogers here, said that his mother in times of crisis would say, look for the helpers. You will always find helpers. Quote, to this day, especially in times of disaster, I remember my mother's words, and I am always comforted by realizing that there are still so many helpers, so many caring people in the world." End quote. Carlene is one of those helpers. Anytime something comes up in church, good or bad, she's there with an open heart and helping hands. She has pulled together last-minute Vesper services for us. She has logged countless hours of overtime to make sure details are taken care of. She has dropped everything when we need her. She even filled in at a memorial service for Aaron Wilson earlier this month when a migraine took me out. Two hours notice and not a single complaint from her. Not then and not since. Her drive isn't just to help church either. She helps friends and family wherever they need, whenever they need, regardless of who it is and how much it may cost her emotionally. She shows up. If someone needs her, she will bend time to make sure she is there. Because this is how she lives her meaningful life. She adds to ours through her presence and through her help, through her service. And in a completely different example, I'm going to pick on Joe Charbonneau, a congregant who's not here today. Anyone who has spent more than an hour with Joe knows that he questions everything about life how we connect with each other, why we do, what it all means, what's real, what's, constri what's contrived, all of it. There is not a thing in this world that Joe does not question. I have sat down with dinners at the Charbonneau's home and come away with an entirely new set of beliefs on existentialism, religion, and even humanity. I am pretty sure Joe lives a life of meaning by questioning the meaning of life. What makes life meaningful for each of us is vastly different, but there exists a simple truth that each of us calls a meaningful life. And I believe when we do, all of life's other questions will find their own answers. 
what is the meaning of church? For me, building family amongst a community. For others, serving others or creating a space in which to question more. What is it for you? What is the meaning of life? For me, it is realizing we are all family. For others, it may be service. And still others, it is the very question itself. <clears throat> what is it for you? What is it for you? I want to take this time and this space to let you answer, to let you hear each other and learn what we each value so differently. Carlin, in the back, is going to come around with a mic, and I'd love for you to stand, raise your hand, and let her bring the mic to you so you can tell us what gives your life meaning. How do you live a meaningful life? What makes life meaningful for you? my life meaning in, in this church is one word, community. Community. <laughs> so there are many questions that we face in this life and think that love is always the answer. People have to speak right into it. You have to get right into the mind. Good morning. Um, trying somehow to make the place, the world a better place through your work, through what you do, through your dealings with people, I guess that's where I find meaning and more specifically with my kids, trying to, trying to teach them the ways of the world and trying to make them able and, I don't know, to, to, to make it go out there. mere existence, and striving for uh, spiritual goals. One of the things that made me come and made me stay was that people, people think here, and that meant so much to me because I came from a lot of dogma, and it was nice to be able to think what I needed to think. <coughs> Um, uh, I think it's all friends, because it's better to love than lose than to never love at all. So, the question for me is what makes me feel the most alive, and that's, you know, being with my family. Um, and also in the studio, um, both places you can just be totally there. But what makes life my meaning most meaningful for me, I think, are the people that are within my inner circle, and the next ring, and the next ring, and the next ring, and I even have to count all my. I can't tell you, almost 600 Facebook friends, uh, but it's just everybody that I interact with. What gives me life meaning here? 
is uh, this place is a um, good place because even at the Unitarian Universalist Salt Lake location, Ogden, which which we are in right now, it feels like family here. focusing on what you're doing and the technique that it's going to take to get you up the trail. But the most important thing that I look for uh, when I'm up there is I run into people and they're all doing something different. They're all doing something that they love. They're walking their dog. They're um, wearing snowman earrings and wearing snowshoes. They're riding on fat bikes like I am. They're sledding down the hill. Just the opportunity to share a smile and talk to people as you go by, to find out what they know, find out how things are in front for you, tell them about what you've been through, what they can expect, the joys and dangers they might find, talk about help on the trail yesterday, talk about um, mountain lion tracks in the snow. Uh, it's just a joy to be in community with people and the mall stripes all walks of life. We're not Democrats, we're not Republicans, we're independents, atheists, we're just people. And that is a very cool thing. Um, I think it's just like the wonder of everything that's around us and how everything is interconnected and that you can never know everything and you learn something new about everything every day. Maybe, you know, I might be the only one here who's been volunteered to speak. My, my children keep poking me and saying, take the mic, you know, say something. I think that's what I want to say is that um, there are people that look to us, whether you have family or kids or not, people do look to you to have some kind of answers at times. I mean, love is the answer, someone says. we don't know anything because we can we can see the answers. There are those that are looking to us to to provide a way and guidance. Um, and I feel it strongly from my children. Uh, I've taken them to another country, only one other country so in, in Nicaragua when they were little. And I've been to about nine or ten different countries. And one thing I always was struck by when I arrived in that country is you wake up to the uh, existence of all the people there which you had completely no awareness of previously. You're suddenly aware that these people have been doing this, eating this food, speaking this language all the, all the time. I just haven't been aware of it. Um, so what I'm saying is that it's meaningful to find out that we are part of a global society. And when you go and meet these people, you realize how could anyone be an enemy in another country considered an enemy because we're all about the same. Bob Dylan's lyric is um, that when my enemy, the thing that scared me most when my enemy came close is that his face looked just like mine. It, 
you haven't figured out your meaning of life, just look to what you do and question why you do it. You can start with, why do I go to this church? Thank you to those who shared, and thank you to all who listened deeply. I'll leave you with two quotes and a thought. Um, one is a quote from my new favorite movie, Dumpling, on Netflix. If you haven't seen it, I highly encourage it. But in there, Aunt Lucy says, uh, paraphrased, each of us at some point must discover who we are. Make sure you do it on purpose. And it applies here, just slightly altered. Each of us, at some point, must discover what makes our lives meaningful. Make sure you do it on purpose. And lastly, from Paulo Coelho and his book, The Alchemist, we are travelers on a cosmic journey, stardust, swirling and dancing in the eddies of the whirlpools and infinity. Life is eternal. We have stopped for a moment to encounter each other, to meet, to love, to share. This is a precious moment. This is a little parenthesis in eternity. Amen. 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 Ye hours are religion, which with sunshine grows everywhere. It's faithful all day.